Greetings to our viewing audience. It's a pleasure once again to be with you to declare the gospel of Jesus Christ and nothing else but the gospel. Today I want to continue on the message that I started last week on the fall of the gods and the rise of kings. I'm here on behalf of Destiny Apartment Global Ministries with our Pastor Eloise Hines. And I pray that you will continue to be a blessing and you will support this ministry in Jesus' name in whatever way you can in your prayers and for the servant of God as she's away at this moment. So I want to get into part two of this message, the fall of the gods and the rise of kings. But just let me say um, nothing is secret about Christianity. Nothing is secret about Christianity. You know, many um, uh, uh, cults and, and, and those that... that religious entities some religious entities in order to be a part of the societies or whatever you they they, they are they are involving you know there's always some secrecy or something but christianity is very open jesus died openly openly oh my god he died openly for everyone to see and i secondly i want you to know that is that satan is defeated and there's a reason why i'm sharing these things with you because we are living in a days where, you know, many people don't seem to understand or know what it is, you know, that uh, Christianity entails. And I'm taking the time to share with you these things because I want to give you an understanding so you can, you, you, you will know what we believe. It is not anything of secrecy. God has made it plain to all men. He wants us to know him and know about him. So Satan is defeated. So you don't have to seek him for anything that God has not died to give you you don't have to seek darkness hallelujah you will see as i share each week the things that god has given to you and given to us for all man to to be a part of in jesus name and thirdly i want you to know why i'm sharing these things that as god has already shown you what he wants you to be and you don't need a man to tell you who God says you are or who you are unless that person is telling you what God has said about you. So understand these things. I'm trying to help you to see these three things. You know, that there's, there's, there's an unfolding in Christianity that has been revealed, God's revealed word, so that man can know how they need to walk with him, how they need to live, how they need to serve him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And to let you know, as you will hear today, ah, my God, the rise, the fall of gods and the rise of kings. So let me get into the word. Um, I, as I said, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3, as I was continuing from last week, Okay, so to help you know that, listen, there's no special ceremony you need to know God. <laughs> All you need to do is have faith. Faith is the formula for everything in regards, to God's, in regards to God's plan and His purposes for you and your success in life. That's all it takes is faith. No special ceremony. It is the law of the kingdom of God, faith. Hallelujah. And if you operate it by it, you will see and you'll be able to apprehend all that it is that God wants for you. So as I was continuing from last week, um, before I say that, let me just give you the scripture. Second Peter 1 Peter 1.3 According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and to godliness Through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue So you see that? There is no secrecy All things he has given unto us Hallelujah That pertain unto life For so if you want to know what your life shall be like Hallelujah. God has already given us those things to help us to know. Amen. So Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 10, as I continue from last week, and I, and, I, and I quoted this scripture also. And it starts out in verse 7 in Revelation 12, as John was getting this revelation through a symbolic display of vision that he was seeing. And he says there was war in heaven. Where was the war in heaven? He says, And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and they prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Bear that in mind. The place was not found in heaven. In Revelation 12, verses, verses 9 of that same chapter, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. And he was cast out into the earth. Where was he cast out? 
in the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Oh my God. Revelation 12, 10. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come, listen, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of God, of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast out, which accused them before God day and night. So understand that salvation came when he was cast out. Mm. And then it said clearly, Revelation 12, 11, just to show you that this is where, when he was cast out, that salvation took place. This was, this was what Paul, John was saying. Ah, my God, when Satan make an onslaught, an assault, in order to stop what God Jesus was about to do for all mankind. Verses 11, it says, and they overcame him by the blood by the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. So who overcame him? The redeemed. Those that were washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay? Redeem of Christ from the earth. Because understand that he is a lamb that was slain before the foundation of the earth. Because in order to take away the sins of the world. John talks about that in John 1.29. He came to take the sins of the world. And they overcame him on account of the blood. On account of the blood. Not because you plead the blood. <laughs> so Satan's fall was the rise of kings. Hallelujah, Jesus. Revelation chapter 1 verses 5, if you are following along with me. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and have made us kings. And priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Hallelujah, Jesus. In Ezekiel chapter 28, in the lament of Ezekiel, in verses 11 to 17 of that chapter, in speaking of the king of terror and using it as a, as a, a, a description or symbolic dis a, a, a description of Satan himself, and of Satan being thrown out of heaven. Now this, this gives you an a, a understanding of Satan's demise. Hallelujah. In verses 13 of Ezekiel 28, it talks about the garden of God. Satan being in the garden of God. And verses 17 of Ezekiel chapter 28, it said that Satan was thrown down to the earth from that place. So... In Revelations that we just read, what John was seeing, we realize then that this is not the first time that Satan was cast out. When John said he saw, when Michael and his angels fought and he was cast down, he was cast out. It was not the first time. Ezekiel also talks about Satan's downfall or casting out. So if Ezekiel was talking about the garden experience with Adam and Eve, then where was Satan cast down from? Hallelujah. Or where was he cast down to, should I say? The world had just begun. So some people will try to use this as the garden experience. But down means down, and up means up. <laughs> Because John, yet still John was saying that the saints are being accused day and night after the first fall, the first falling of Satan. So who's the them when he says them? Who was he speaking to that he was accusing? Who was the them that were being accused? All of those from the Old Testament up to John's time was the then that was the then known world satan was accusing them all the time after he was cast out and this was what happened was ezekiel saw and ezekiel also described but this was his first casting out hallelujah but unfortunately 
shall I say, Satan still had a place in heaven so that he can come before God, oh my God, and make his accusations. I don't want to go into the first and the second to the third heaven and so on. That, that is not significant right now. Okay? So, he was able to have some access. That's why he was able to come before God in Job chapter 1 and be able to accuse Job. Hallelujah. So, when he was cast down, he was cast down from a place of authority. Of a place of authority. Understand this. And this is another, and this is very controversial. Um, but it's a very factual, but it's very factual, a very factual topic, though it's very controversial. And I don't want to get into all of that concerning, um, it is, it talks about before Adam, before Adam. <laughs> I think that some things are left, are, are to be left untouched. Because they are unnecessary to the building up of others' faith and the saints. So Job chapter 1 verses 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. You see that? So he still had, he still had access. And verse 7 says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and forth, and from walking up and down in the earth. How was he able to do that? <laughs> So he still has some privileges before God until he was kicked out for a second time. Ah, oh my God. From that position which John saw in Revelations 12, 9 and 10. But he was kicked out now. He was kicked out to the atmospheric domain. Or what the Bible says, the power of the ear. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you will find that in Ephesians 2, verses 2. Where it says, in times past, you walk, talking about the unbeliever, according to the believer who once were unbelievers, you walk according to the course of this world. So this world has a course. <laughs> it has a course. According to the prince of the power of the air, the atmospheric domain, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So you see, when John saw, he says, now is salvation. And it says he was cast down to the earth. Hallelujah. So now Satan has a realm in the atmosphere domain from where he does his evil works. Hallelujah. But why was Satan given this privilege? Still in heaven in the first, in the first place. He was cast out. Where he was, in the first time he was cast out, that Ezekiel talked about. I want you to understand that Satan's position, as I said before, was one of authority. That is what he lost. And that is what he, he, he aimed to be the ultimate authority. Oh my God. He wanted ultimate authority. This is what God gave. Oh my God. It is, you don't understand. I want you to understand how privileged you are when you're born again. You're born again life, my God. And what God has given to you. Because if you don't know, the enemy will, he will have you like a, a bouncing ball, up and down, left and right. If you don't know what it is God has given to you. He raises up with him. Hallelujah. Ah, Satan wanted a position. Next to God, a position that God has given to man. Hallelujah, Jesus. Not as God as he wanted to be. He wanted us to be like God, but not to be God. Ah, because we are seated with him, the Bible says, in Ephesians 2.6, in heavenly places with Christ. It says in Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, even when we were dead in sins, have he quickened us together with Christ. Ah, oh my God. By grace are you saved and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. This is our spiritual experience with God. Hallelujah, Jesus. So everything Satan can have, God gave to his children. Oh, my God. I, I, I help you. This is why he hates mankind so much. Uh, we are not only in a privileged position, we are light. Uh, and when you see what, how, how Satan, the resemblance and the, the makeup of Satan, you will understand. 
Ah, my God, what a privilege we are to be mere lights of God. The Bible says we are the light of the world. Mm. We have been given glory and authority. We are anointed. All the things Satan lost and desired, God gave to his children. Hallelujah, Jesus. Here, here, here the description of Satan. Ezekiel described, ah oh my God, in speaking about the king of terror, in the likeness of how Satan, you know, is in, in his manner also. Ezekiel 28, 13 says, Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, and every precious stone was thy covering. Oh my God, he, he was a beautiful creature. Uh, it says, the sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, my God, what beauty. And the carbuncle, and the gold, and the workmanship of thy tabrets, hallelujah, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou was created, my God. Uh, Satan, Satan had music exuding from him. Ah, uh, my God. Verses 40 says, thou art the anointed cherub. Bear that in mind. Thou was anointed. Satan was anointed. He was the anointed cherub that covereth. Ah, oh my God. And I have set thee, God says, so that thou was upon thy holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down the mist of heaven. Amidst the stones of fire, sorry. Verses 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Ah. Till iniquity was found in thee by the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled they, they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned therefore i will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of god and i will destroy thee O covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire ah my god ah jesus so Ezekiel says Satan was the anointed cherub. He was anointed. Uh, and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a cherub, I don't have time to give all the description, but it was like a winged creature that you will find covering the mercy seat. And if you go in Genesis, it's most likely that this was also those that were set up when man was cast out of the garden to keep and protect the garden from, from, from man entering it to again. So Satan was anointed. You see, when you are anointed, oh my God, you, you become untouchable. Hallelujah, Jesus. Touch not the Lord's anointing, it says, and do his prophets no harm. Hmm. So God, you will say, why didn't God judge Satan at that moment and destroy him completely? Ah, you see, God is still a God of mercy. Even the devil have a little grace. Hallelujah, Jesus. So God did not destroy him, the anointed one, Satan, the anointed cherub, until the anointed one came. Hallelujah. It had to take another, an anointing of someone to destroy that anointing, mm, which is Jesus. Ah. To destroy. The anointed one came to destroy the anointed. Hmm. You know, that is why David did not take, up, up, take the opportunity to kill Saul, even though he had many times to take his life. Hallelujah. Because he was anointed. And that is, a, that is a lesson for many of us who sometimes raise our voices against those who may have truly been called to the ministry. And you may think that they, 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 they don't deserve, you know, the honor that you give to them because their lives may not seem to you as perfect, but you must be careful. They are anointed. Uh, David said in 1 Samuel 24, and he said unto him, The Lord forbid that I shall do this, to do this unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing that he is anointed of the Lord, even though in the eyes of many he would have had the right to destroy him. Because he was after his life. Oh my God. But David recognized that he was anointed. Listen, we have to be very careful. We have to be very careful. How we come against God's anointed ones. The Bible says he was thrown to the earth. Satan was thrown where? To the earth. 
the extensions of the regions or the, or the, the terrain or the globe he was thrown. Mm. Paul said he's the God. That's why he says he's the God of this world. And that is why the Bible says we are given victory over the world. Great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ah, my God. Over Satan's kingdom, you have overcome them for you are greater. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wherever you believe Satan rules from, whether the first, third, fourth, how many heavens you want to call them. Hallelujah. We are greater than him in any part of the world. Hallelujah, Jesus. For we exist before and far above. Hallelujah. Psalm 8 verses 3 says, When I look at the heavens, the work of your fingers. Hallelujah. The moon and the stars that you establish. What is man that you take notice of him? Or the son of man that you pay attention to him? You made him a little less than divine. Oh my God, other translations say a little less than God, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the work of your hands, and you have put all things under his feet. Hallelujah. You see, I'm, I'm saying these things to show you how we make ourselves look so small in light of all that Christ has done for us. When the God of the earth mm, fell, we were raised. When God fell, <laughs> my God, we were raised. Ah, Jesus. Your born again life is a very powerful, is a very, uh, a very significant, powerful and great and awesome life that you have been given. And let me say to this to you that you can know this kind of life. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you can know this life. You, you, don't, you don't have to live your life and, uh, and live as if you, know, you have received nothing. You are at the bottom of the barrel and your life is meaningless. God can bring you in to a supernatural life. My God, a life that exists more powerful than Satan himself. My God, how can a God give man, a man that, that, that are so insignificant, it seems, when you go out of space and you look and you see the significance of man, you can't even see him from space. And to think that God is above all of that, Oh my God, a vast and my awesome and magnificent God will come and live in such a small spectacle of man. And yet still that man will look up to him and say, I don't know you. I don't care about you. I don't even want to hear you. A God that can just blink his eye and you are gone. And yet still he chose to come down, my God, to suffer for you and me. What a God. And then he comes now to raise up a little spectacle at you and give you all power over Satan's kingdom and Satan's demons, my God. And you still let Satan throw you all about, beat you all about. Hallelujah, Jesus. Philippians 3.18 says, For I have, I have often told you, now I tell you even with tears, that many live as enemies of the cross of the Messiah. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their belly. Their glory is their shame. Their minds are set on worldly things. Listen, my, our citizenship is in heaven, he says. And it is from there that we eagerly wait for a Savior, the Lord Jesus, the Messiah. You see, we are living from that place. Hallelujah. He will change our unassuming or vile bodies and make them like his glorious body through the power that enables him to bring everything under his authority. Hallelujah, Jesus. He says our citizenship is in heaven. My God, you might be looking at me now as a mere man and say this mere man is just talking to me. No, you're just seeing a shell. <laughs> My citizenship is in heaven. Hallelujah. And when you are existing in that place, hallelujah, Jesus, you're unmoved by earthly things because you know, ah, my God, that the systems of heaven operates on a different laws, hallelujah, different laws of power, different laws of love, different laws, my God, of grace, hallelujah. We exist in a place, hallelujah, where we live in the laws of faith, hallelujah. Mm, as I was sharing with someone this morning, uh, the laws of faith are just as, as are greater 
but it operates just as naturally as the law of gravity. And it's the same way that you can access healing. You can access the things of God by that law. Just as you breathe, you don't have to fight for it. God has already done it. You just need to live in the law. Hallelujah. Faith. Hallelujah. And you begin to receive those things. Hallelujah, Jesus, that God has for you. So I pray today that you were blessed and you were encouraged as I come to a close. I just bring these things to help you to see that your life is not insignificant. You don't, you don't have to, to live your life being thrown about by whatever the enemy sends you and whatever people and, and let people confuse you and bring you under some darkness or some dark spell to tell you and have you confused. You can know your purpose in life. You can know you can live a victorious life. Uh, because Christ has already done it for you and he has revealed it so that you can have it today. So I pray today that you were blessed. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, may you accept him today as your Lord and Savior. And say, God, forgive me of all of my sins. Come into my heart that I can live this life above the, the trials of this life. Above, oh God, all the things, oh God, and over Satan himself. And you can have it today if you ask him to come into your life and forgive you. So for now, I pray that you were blessed. Stay tuned until next week as I continue these messages and many more to bless and encourage you. And now this is Julian Armstrong sitting in for Pastor Eloise Hines of Destiny, Empowerment Global Ministries. May God bless you and do have a great week.